My name is Florence. Nice. I love your name, Florence. That is such a nice name. So, how are you today? Uh, I'm fine. Good. And have you had a good day? Yes. Good. What did you do how today? Are you? Oh, oh, thank you for asking. Thank you so much for asking. I'm okay. I'm very good. I've had a nice morning, so I can't complain. What did you do today, Florence? Um, I have a, a translation class in the morning, okay. and in the afternoon, uh, we practiced dancing. Oh wow! Okay, so you like dancing? Yeah. Me too. I like dancing as well. <laughs> okay. What kind of dancing? So where I live, we dance the bachata, salsa, um, Spanish dancing. Yeah, and you? I like jazz. Jazz. Okay. Well, that's very difficult. <laughs> okay, Florence. Fantastic. Well, again, it's so nice to meet you today. So. Today, we are going to do a bit of reading. So, do you enjoy reading, Florence? Yeah. Yeah, good. I love reading. Reading is one of my favorite things. So, what we're going to do in our class today is we're going to start with some reading, which I'll ask you to do. Then, we are going to look at some vocabulary, and then we're going to look at some comprehension. Okay, so, okay. can you see my screen okay? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so lesson 26, the Alcott artist, Abigail May Alcott. So this is the theme. So what I'd like to do, just to warm up, can you tell me and read the title of each book? So what books do we have here? Uh, Charlotte's Web, Good. A Bear Called Paddington, Ned the Great. Brilliant. We have Charlotte's Web, A Bear Called Paddington, and Nate the Great. And actually, Paddington Bear is from London, like me. So, that's good. Wow. <laughs> okay. So, we're going to start with some reading, but just relax take your time i'm going to ask you to read it and if there are any big mistakes we can correct them together does that sound okay okay fantastic okay. well well done florence okay so what i'd like to do could you start by reading here please little women is a beloved book written in 1869 it was written by louise may alcott it is about four sisters. Amy, the youngest, is an artistic sister. In real life, Louisa May Alcott had a little sister. Her name was May, and May was quite an artist. The family called her Little Raphael Raph 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 from 1883 to 1520, was a famous Italian painter. Wow. Okay, your reading is very good. So let's let's just carry on. Abigail May Alcott was born in 1840. She began painting and drawing as a young girl. Her parents encouraged her talent. They let May decorate the walls of their home called Orchard House. She drew faces, flowers, and other things. Brilliant. Wow, Florence, you're doing really, really well. So if you can just carry on from here, please. May pursued her passion for art in Boston. She went to Boston School of Design. She also went to the School of the Museum of Fine Arts. At both schools, May studied under leading artists. She did several illustra illustrations for the first part of Little Women. Yet May wanted more. Louisa gained fame and money from writing Little Women. The money made it possible for the two sisters 
to travel to Europe in 1870. When Luisa returned home, May stayed in Europe. She studied art there, like Amy in Little Women. May felt this was a dream come true. May's biggest success came in 1877. The Paris Salon displayed one of May's still life paintings. It was called Fruit and Bottles. Who would have imagined such good fortune? So strong proof that Lu, Louisa does not monopolize the alcohol talent, May wrote. Monopolize means being the only one to have something. Okay, a little bit more. More good news came in 1878. May married Ernest Nerica. That'll do. <laughs> He was a Swiss businessman and violinist. Ernest was 15 years younger, but the two were in love. They lived near Paris. There, they shared what May described as an ideal life, painting, music, and love. May and Ernest welcome to a baby daughter, Louisa Lulu May, in November 1879, sadly, May died from an infection six weeks later. In response to May's dying wish, Louisa brought Lulu to America. She cared for the little girl as her own daughter. Wow, okay, and I think there's just a little bit more. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. After Louisa's death, Lulu returned to her father in Europe. Louisa Alcott also had an older sister. Her name was Anna. Anna had two children. Louisa's legal heir, John, did not have any children. Eventually, Lulu had two children of her own. And the Alcott descendants get together every few years. They meet at Orchard House. There, they celebrate their family history. Very good. And this is the last bit. May Alcott showed great talent as an artist. However, she died before she could really make a name for herself. Today, the sketches May draw on the walls of her bedroom at Orchard House are covered with plexiglass. This helps to preserve them. Wow, Florence, that was amazing. There was there was a lot of reading there, but your reading is fantastic. You um, and I mean this. You, your use of punctuation was superb. You know, with the commas, just a small little pause. Your pace was absolutely brilliant, and you have a really nice accent. You have a lovely way of talking. So, Florence, I'm really impressed. That was a fantastic reading. Thanks. How do you feel that was? Are you Thanks. are you pleased with that? Yes. Good. Well, that's good. If you are happy, I am happy. Okay, so in a moment, we will go back to the reading. But for now, we're just going to look at some vocabulary to understand it. Okay. So we have this first word here, ideal. Ideal. What do you think that word means? It means that... Uh something that you want you hope to attain exactly brilliant so if I said to you my ideal day is blah, 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 blah. what do I mean what do I mean by that means uh, the day that you you are expected to live exactly in, so if I said my ideal day, it would be my perfect day. So what I would like to happen in my day. So for me, my ideal day would be to go to the beach. What what would your ideal day be? Uh, my ideal day is uh, is 
to have a rest without homework. <laughs> I think, yeah, just to sleep. No homework, no school. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds ideal to me. Good. OK. Now, the next word. Could you read this word for me, please, Florence? Air. Air. Well read. What does that mean? What is an air? What do you think? It means a person that uh, is to inherit the property of another people. Exactly. Exactly. So it can be somebody's child. In England, we have the royal family. And sometimes we will say he is heir to the throne. Have you heard of that before? Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean? He is heir to the throne. Heir to the throne means no, uh, prince, prince. Wow. Yeah. That's exactly it. Well, wow, Florence, I'm really impressed. I am really impressed. Okay, next word. Can you read it for me? Encourage. Good. What What does it mean to encourage? Uh, it means uh, inspire. Yeah. Someone. Yeah. Exactly. Why is we have encourage and we have encouragement. Why is encouragement important? Why would you say it is important? Uh, because it can give others more confidence. Exactly. Exactly. Encouragement is what makes us keep on going. If we don't have encouragement, then it's very difficult. Well done. So, the last word. Could you read it for me? Pursue. Pursue. Hmm. That's a strange word. What do you think that word means? Uh, it means um, chase for something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So sometimes we will maybe um, a police car is chasing a criminal and we will say that police car is pursuing or in pursuit. Good. So we have ideal, air, encourage, pursue. So what I would like you to do now is could you use each of these words in a sentence for me? So could you use the word ideal? in a full sentence. Uh, uh, his ideal life is to uh, his It's okay, keep going. His ideal is to his ideal is to uh, live an easy life. Brilliant. So you could say his ideal life is an easy life. Well done. Really, really well done. Nice one. OK, the next word, air. Could you use that in a full sentence for me, please? Mm, he is the heir of his family. Brilliant. Well, wow. OK. And encourage? Uh Our teacher always encourage us to uh, speak more. <laughs> Good. So that would be our teacher always encourages us to speak more. Good. Do you find speaking easy in English or does it make you a bit scared, nervous? Sometimes I'm nervous. Yeah. Yeah, that's normal. Especially when I have to deliver a speech. Mm. Yeah, that is that is completely normal. So don't worry. I get scared speaking in English and it's my first language. So don't worry. <laughs> it's OK. But you have a really nice accent. Okay. So don't don't ever be nervous, Florence. You're doing really well. OK. And the last word. Uh, 
uh, he makes uh, all the efforts to pursue his dream. Wow. Okay. Wow. He makes all the efforts to pursue his dream. That is exactly what I was thinking. So well done. When we pursue something, it's like reaching for it. Yeah, we keep reaching for it. Good. Okay, so fantastic. You did well with that. So now, let's go back to our reading. What do you remember? Okay. What? Who did we read about? Can you remember anything? Who was she? Mm, the Louis, Louis Elcott. Good. May out. Good. Well done. So, very good. What we can do is we're going to go back to here. So, we're going to come back to May Alcott in a second, but we're going to look at some more vocabulary. So, here we have the root word and a suffix. Have you heard of this before? A root word and a suffix? Yeah. Good. Okay. So, Art is the root word. What does that mean? If art is the root word, what does it mean by root? It means you can put many kinds of suffix uh, after the word. Exactly. So root word is like a tree. Root word is where the word comes from. And then we have a suffix and a prefix. So... Yeah. We have the root word here, art. If we add the suffix, how does that change the meaning? It means a person. Yeah, we have an artist. So we have art and we have an artist. Are you an artist, Florence? Do you like painting? Do you like drawing? Uh, actually, no. No, <laughs> me neither. I cannot draw. My drawing is terrible. Good. Okay. The root word here, decor. If we add the suffix, we get... Uh, decorate. Decorate. Good. What does it mean to decorate? If I said to you, I am going to decorate my bedroom, what do I mean? It means uh, to make your bedroom look better. Yeah, exactly. Maybe do some painting. I don't know. Clean. <laughs> Good. Okay. Monopoly. What does that mean? That is a... Monopoly. What do you think that means? There was a definition in the paragraph, if I can find it. There we go. So this is monopolize means being could you read that for me the only one to have something good so monopoly means we are the only ones to have something so sometimes a business can have a monopoly but if we add the suffix it turns into a verb exactly monopolize well done florence okay and the last one could you read this word for me? Descend. Good, which means to go down. So a suffix is... De descendant. Good. So what is a descendant? <coughs> it means uh, the offspring. Yeah, that's exactly it. So, I am the descendant of my father and mother, and then it goes down. Okay, so what I would like you to do now is, using these um, suffixes, so we have ist and eight, I would like you to think of two root words that we could add these two to change the word. What do you think? Let's take IST first. Can you think of anything? There's another word mentioned in the uh, text. Okay, can you? Violinist. 
Uh, uh, what, sorry? The linguist. Exactly. Good. So, what is the root word? Violin. Good. Have you ever played the violin? No. no. I, I tried at school. It was very bad. I will never, ever play the violin again. Good. So we have violin and then a violinist. Okay. Can you think of a word with A-T-E? Eight. Uh. Hmm. So we have decor, we have decorate. Don't worry if you can't. It's absolutely fine. So let's have a look. Let's see if we can find one in in our text. So is there anything that you can think of? What about Celebrate. celebrate. Yes, celebrate. Or we can, there is so many words that we can add the suffix to and it, it changes. So now we're going to, oh, my camera has gone one moment. Oh, there we go. Oof. Scared for a second then. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. Okay. So now we're going to go to the story and this is our main activity. So what I would like you to do is we're going to think about the different times here. So we're going to go back to the story, and I want you to tell me what happened in each time. So let's take 1840. Okay. Let's take 1840. So what can you see in this text that happened in 1840? Abigail May Elcott was born in 1840. Good. So that is the main text. So we can scroll back down. So can you can you type on your computer, Florence? Okay. Here for me, can you write what happened in 1840? Just underneath here. Okay, what I'm going to do is just move that along a bit. Perfect, there we go. Now I can see it. Brilliant. So this is our timeline. So we start in 1840. And what happened in 1840? What happened in 1840? Abigail May Alcott was born. Okay, now let's go back to 1870. So now we know that she was born in 1840. What happened in 1870? Mm. The two sisters traveled to Europe. Brilliant. So she was born in 1840. In 1870, they traveled to Europe. So could you write that there for me underneath? You can just put they traveled to Europe or whatever. Okay, what I'm going to do is just see if I can move that. Okay, good. We can put, we can just put that there. <laughs> the two sisters traveled to Europe. Perfect. Well done. So, if they were born in 1840, if she, sorry, if Abigail was born in 1840, how old was she when she traveled to Europe in 1870? 30 years old. So she was born in 1840 and she traveled in 1870. So how old would she have been? She is a short 40 years old. Exactly. That is the same age as me. Wow. Same age as me. I'm an old man. Okay, good. So now 
1877. Can you find 1877? What happened? Uh, um, May's biggest success came in 1877 when Paris Salon displayed one of her still life paintings. Brilliant. So what we can do here in 1877, could you write what happened there? We can just put maybe displayed a painting, uh, the painting was displayed, whatever. Perfect. Wow. Okay. So now 1878. You're doing really well with this. This isn't easy. So you're doing well. In 1878, she got married. Can you see that there? Um, and in 1879, what happened? They, they, had, they had a baby daughter. Good. But in 1879, good. Brilliant. So 1879, they had a daughter. So in 1878, what happened? Can you write it down for me? Exactly. And 1879, brilliant, exactly, well done. So if you had to name this timeline, what would you name it? If you had to give uh, it, what would you call it? you think maybe the life of the the life of um uh El Abigail Abigail May Elcott exactly well done well Florence I I'm genuinely really impressed with your English abilities your your reading was fantastic. Your understanding of the material was absolutely brilliant. So did you enjoy today's class? Yes, yeah? I a lot. Good. And keep up the good work. Keep up with your reading. You know, your pace is absolutely fantastic. But what do you think is the most important thing we have to remember when we are reading? What would you say? There's no right or wrong answer. Uh, um, get to know the main idea of the passage. Well, that's exactly it. We have to understand what we are reading. So, and you did yes. that. You showed clearly from your reading that you did that. So, if we ever have another lesson again, we can... We can carry on with our, um, with our discussion of that material, but we always have to understand what we are reading. But well done. Now, one last question before we go. Can you remember any of our vocabulary, our four words? Uh, we had... Encourage. Good. Encourage. If I can spell it. There we go. Pursue. Good. Air. Air. And one more. And ideal. Perfect. Well done, Florence. Really well done. And I hope we get a chance to talk again. Okay. okay. Fantastic. Well done, Florence. Bye-bye.